Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Veos and welcome to another episode of Solar Nations. Now, in the last one we finished with the X2B and I believe Bill Kerman disappeared and Jebediah died unfortunately due to an accident that that was my, that was my fault. So the X2B did a good orbit in the landing. Now this is the X2-C, and basically what it has in what what the what's different is that the goo containers are inside of these structural panels to try to protect them during re-entry. Uh, it was a it was a test. It, I wanted to see if I could possibly not clip them so badly into the actual structure of the rocket. I thought maybe hey maybe I can put them inside like a structural panel to try to keep them from burning up. Unfortunately, well, some things went wrong. Now, unlike the previous flights, this flight was actually a polar orbit, so I can collect as many observational data as possible as Kerbin spun underneath me, so I can get all the biomes as, that I possibly could. Now, in an attempt to land at the, at the polar ice caps in order to get actual physical data, uh, something went wrong. It, uh, it was going way too fast and I believe there was a whole lot of things that were starting to overheat and so I went ahead and made a judgment call and I ejected in order to save the Kerbal's life because you know I'm trying not to lose uh, all these Kerbals uh, Bill Kerman was uh, well that was a computer glitch but Jebediah was my fault so from now on you know if I think, if I think for one second that something bad's gonna happen, I will eject and save that Kerbal. Now the good news is, is that before re-entry, I went ahead and took as many science experiments as I possibly could and put them inside the capsule, which saved, uh, saved some science, which is pretty good. So now we have science that we can unlock some new stuff, and of course, survivability is the one I'm going for, for the heat shields and side parachutes and even, yes, that lovely little cargo bay so I can put the goo containers in there instead of having them you know catch a ride on the sides of the rocket now for this new craft and I believe I call it the X3 right now it's the X2C but it's a I'm working on it um, I was going for uh, two things one a type of landing gear system without having those little itty bitty landing gears because they tend to overheat and explode if you look at their um, heat resistance, it's not all, it's not that great at all. But at the same time, I wanted, I wanted something to slow the craft down, sort of like air brakes, something that could really just real, really slow it down or as fast as possible. So these kind of played, uh, it, it kind of did a dual, dual function of being air brakes as well as uh, makeshift landing gears. Now, upon re-entry, something was overheating inside the craft. I didn't know what it was, but if the craft explodes during re-entry, it could kill the Kerbal. So I made a judgment call and went ahead and aborted. But the funny thing was is that right here, the capsule was actually moving faster or had uh, not as much drag as the actual ship itself, even though the ship was many, many times heavier than the capsule which only means that the whole idea of having landing gear slash air brakes kind of makeshift thingamajig actually did work in slowing down the craft a lot faster than having just one capsule flying around by itself. Uh, so it was a good idea. Um, so I went ahead and after the landing here, it's a nice safe landing at night. I couldn't see anything so I had no idea. But uh, after editing I went ahead and put in a little something there for you guys so you can see. I start playing around with different concepts of rockets, which this one almost killed the poor Kerbal, but thankfully we were able to uh, eject. But look at this, even, <laughs> even with the parachute out, it still has more drag than the actual capsule itself, before the parachute of course opens up, but that, that's pretty good, that's pretty cool. Now the reason why I added more boosters was because of course it was too heavy for the original design to get it up into orbit. The problem was with adding more boosters, uh, a strange thing started to happen where the nose of the rocket kept on pointing down. No matter how hard I tried to pull up, it would always point down. And I know it was kind of beating a dead horse launching over and over and over again, but I was convinced that the problem 
was not, well, even though yes, it was the rocket, the problem probably was the flight path for this particular type of rocket. I had to go up higher before I actually started putting the nose down. Eventually, it finally worked, and I was able to find a nice little landing spot in order to test just how well this thing could not only re-enter, but of course land. And I was bound to determine not to get scared and abort. I was bound and determined, so Valentina, she went ahead and, and she really, really put her life on the line for this experimental spacecraft. And it paid off in the end. We were able to get some science and do a nice little landing, even plant a flag and enjoy the scenery. Now this part is in KSP 105, and thankfully the, saves w the save was not broken, even though, even though there was a few things that kind of changed. Uh, with the actual science tree itself, such as the jet cockpit Mark 1 wasn't there anymore. Now it's uh, further down the tree, so that was taken out. But other than that, it was pretty much the same thing. Now for the rocket itself, I actually went back to the drawing board of the X1 and 2, and whoa, yeah, I turned on the engine just a little too hard there. But I went back to the drawing board for the X1 and 2, and try to simplify the rocket as best as I could, so that all I wanted was a rocket that got me from A to B, could land, get all the stuff that it needed, and be done with it without some sort of fancy thing going on. Now, the problem with this is though, that the rocket itself, I guess something happened and it completely exploded and almost killed the poor Kerbal here. And I was very, very lucky that, it, that the explosions stopped right at the neck of the ship. Now, of course, I was thinking to myself, well, you know, I need to go ahead and eject at the time. I was like, I need to eject right now. But um, now that I look at it, I should have just landed with all that stuff intact. I could have had the um, goo containers, could have got some science from that, but oh well. I wasn't thinking about that at the time. Now, basically, what I did was I just launched the same craft over and over and over again because I wanted to try to get... Uh, data, hardcore data from the ice caps. Because that's, you know, once I get hardcore data from the ice caps, I can go ahead and aim for different biomes around Kerbin. Which is basically the mission that I'm at right now, to try to suck as much science out of Kerbin before I actually do anything. Right here, I accidentally hit the space bar and I lose all that precious data. Oh, right into the ocean. And I just, I just, uh, boy, that sucked. Now, the thing that I didn't realize that I was about to experience was the difficulty in trying to land a single freaking capsule at the North Pole or ice caps. Due to re-entry heat being very lethal, you couldn't just pop a spaceship up way up into the to orbit, or not even orbit, but into space, and then kind of fall down directly where you want to be. It wasn't that easy anymore. You have to sort of skim across the atmosphere and slow down enough before you finally actually re-enter. And of course that, that means that you have a lot of problems with aiming your spacecraft. And in this instance I was trying to go for the North Pole but ended up way into the mountains, way off course. And unfortunately I lost some of that data that I, uh, yep, there it goes. Uh, thankfully though, those cargo bays saved my life. They went ahead and opened them up. They flattened out the the uh, ship just enough to keep it from rolling down this extremely steep hill. But even then, I figured, well, I've got the goo containers. Let me go ahead and try to get some EVA data. there Because there was no way in hell that I was going to try to get freaking surface data. Are you crazy? There's no way. Uh-uh. Well, I noticed that the craft was rolling around a little bit during re-entry, and I'm trying to keep the craft uh, to be able to uh, correct itself during re-entry, so I don't have to play around with the controls. So I tried to put as much of the weight towards the bottom as possible. But I did notice something during the re-entry of that last uh, spacecraft, was that when I opened up the cargo bay doors, it slowed down my craft significantly, kind of like air brakes. So I said, huh, maybe I can do the same thing with this and try to test out the possibility of opening them up during re-entry to see if it'll slow me down a little bit. And it did kind of seem like it slowed me down a lot faster than it did before. 
although the parachutes could have found a better spot on the spacecraft, but thankfully it wasn't going too fast nor to do any real damage. Now I figured this air brake idea sounded really cool to be able to open up as it were and slow down real real fast and then deploy the chutes and have radiators and everything to keep myself cool during re-entry would be a really great idea. Well unfortunately, yeah, the radiators started to overheat really fast, which of course is probably a bug, but this launch was plagued from day one. It was absolutely full of bad omens. <laughs> Just the radiators were glitching. They were overheating right off the launch pad. Uh, the design itself was completely experimental. I had no idea what to expect. And on top of that, there was a frickin' eclipse during that day. It like all the it was it was Apollo 13 all over again. During re-entry, I started really losing control, but the battery power was being drained, I think, from the actual radiators. Because uh, the, there's no, there's no, there's, the SAS is off, there's no power really being anywhere, there's no lights. I even turned off the gears, even though there is no gears, I figured maybe it's another glitch in the game, but the power was still being drained. So finally, I started losing control during re-entry. I said, screw it, we're, we're getting out of here. So I went ahead and aborted. And um, suddenly the power stopped. The power stopped draining when I aborted, which is making me think that the radiators actually consume power. I'm not sure how that works. Um, is it, I don't know, maybe it's because I have the cargo bay doors open. Maybe that's what's draining power. Whatever the case is, I went ahead and I thought, okay, we're, we're out of the clear, we're fine. Yeah, right. Again, another freaking cliffside. Now, I went ahead and went in to edit and I blew it up so you could see it, but at the time, all I saw was pitch darkness and sort of edges of a cliffside. I was like, oh man. So I went ahead and as soon as I landed, I went ahead and I said, I recover, recover, recover. But yeah, that was, <laughs> that launch was bad luck everywhere. Now for the X5. What I needed was a craft that could hold its own weight during re-entry. That means being able to survive an extreme re-entry, but also have enough weight at the bottom of the craft to correct itself and I didn't have to do anything with SAS or anything of that nature. So what I did was I stacked up a whole bunch of heat shields together in order to have more weight than maybe a few fuel tanks, but also the least amount of space which a fuel tank actually takes up a lot more space and isn't as heavy as a whole bunch of heat shields stacked together. This of course was just an experiment, it wasn't some sort of grand design that I thought up of, but inadvertently I made it to the ice caps. I, <laughs> all those launches and I finally made it to the ice caps with this completely experimental doomed to fail mission and I was like, well holy crap, it worked. Now. In my excitement, unfortunately, uh, I forget to deploy all of the parachutes and I lose the material science bay, which really, really sucked. But I was very, very thankful that even though this was a completely experimental spacecraft, I could get to the ice caps with this spacecraft. So I went ahead, did the exact same launch, and finally got my material data that I always wanted. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have to end it right here. But um, the whole mission for right now is, of course, to get as much science data as possible from all the biomes around Kerbin before I even attempt to go to the moon, which I probably will do in my spare time, and so that way you don't have to sit through all of it. But for now, it is very late, and I need to go to bed. Long week ahead of me. Woohoo! Yay! So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much for your support. I am Veos Human, signing off, and have a good night.